Schoen picks up, and they've got a short field. They've got another goal. It's tied up at 12. I can't not believe what goes. I'm seeing Can here. Lola Dam chase that one down? That is a score for Hashley Gerlfarkel. Fantastic run by Julia Lola. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. And we believe that that requires knocking down the paywall. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch, and we want them to go viral. When you become a member, you enable us to improve our working relationships with tournament organizers, events and federations. And you'll help us to produce live stories for Ultimate fans and to generate new fans with our enhanced content. We, we are, are a group, group of, of Ultimate, Ultimate players, players, coaches and video enthusiasts. And we want to bring you coverage on a more consistent basis. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Ciao ragazzi, support the community. Let's subscribe Ultimate TV. There's lots of the videos, posting, everything. Check it out. <laughs> they are the best one. Woo! If you want to grow Ultimate Sports, uh, become a member of Ultimate TV. Regardez Ultimate TV. Deviens un membre de Ultimate TV. Et fais grandir ta communauté. Top Ulti TV, t'as le mai, et au Ginkime, Ulti Mai, t'as vendu à Menace. Si tu veux aider à Ulti TV, tu peux être membre de Ulti TV. Thumbs up for Ulti TV! Everyone, follow Ulti.tv on Instagram, on YouTube, they've got everything. Best like, content! Like their pictures if you love Frisbee, just do it. You, we're counting on you. Leave me a love for Ulti TV. Became member of Ulti TV. TV. Woo! <laughs> Mamma mia! Contribue au développement d'Ultimate avec Ulti TV. Like and subscribe, Ulti TV, the best in the world. We want to grow Ultimate. We want to grow Ultimate. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We have our signature style two camera setup. With thousands of hours of experience. And our crew is globally dispersed to facilitate coverage everywhere around the world. We can also scale back our broadcast with just one elevated camera. Or scale up with two fields, two cameras and two commentators on each. We work with local teams and we all have the same mission, to grow the sport and bring it to new people by providing live coverage and new stories. Become a member today on our Patreon page. And, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories, ideas and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. Okay, now, team. He's in a great spot. Yeah. He's in a perfect spot. Yes, his massive head has blocked everything. Oh. That was a huge play, yeah, but we have seen face. none of it. Finney, Finney, he's done it. Right now, he's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed.
Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Wrocław, Poland, the venue for the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships. First time event combining the World Junior Ultimate Championships in the under 20 age bracket and the European Youth Ultimate Championships in the under 17s age bracket. With schedules slightly offset due to COVID, they've combined them into this wonderful event and our action continues here with the under 17 open division with Sweden, you see there with the blue jerseys, taking on France in white. It's a pleasure to be back with you here on a uh, slightly milder morning. We've had blazing sunshine for most of our time here, but a bit of cloud cover overhead, but beautiful playing conditions. My name is Benjamin Reese, and it is once more a delight to be joined by Christina Obermeyer. Good morning, Benji. Good morning, everyone out there. Thanks for tuning in this early. And I think it's going to be a great game. France has been very good. Have yet been to see face a real challenge. They've, they're undefeated, 0-3. And what I really like, what we talked uh, about before the game started, um, they are very evenly distributed in, in terms of goals and assists. So it's not that they have one or two, three players that do a lot of the heavy lifting, but over... Overall, the team is very even and they share the, the amount of goals and assists. Yeah, everyone on the roster has achieved some sort of stat with the exception of one player and no one's got more than seven combined goals and assists, which, as you mentioned, it demonstrates that they're distributing, uh, distributing the offense up and down the roster. For Sweden, not such a strong start to the tournament. Went down 11-9 to Germany, but fought back from 9-7 down to beat Great Britain 10-9 on Universe and then a 14-10 win over the Netherlands yesterday afternoon for France, as you mentioned, undefeated. Knocked off Italy in their first game, 10-8. But two relatively comfortable rides in their next two games. A 14-6 win over Germany, and then a 15-8 win over the Swiss. Yeah, so we talked about this being maybe um, a rather clear matchup just on paper with the benefit for, for France, but... You never know what happens on a field. Yeah, drag out the first cliche of the day nice and early. Mm -hmm. The game's not played on paper. Especially, I think, at the uh, at the youth levels, sometimes you feel that it, all it can take is just one big play, one little run of breaks, and the script is completely flipped. We've also talked about how energy really can change the mentality of a team. And if you come up firing and have one or two amazing players, plays... Um, that can really change the momentum of the game as well. 100%. And then that's not just true at junior levels. It's true at senior levels as well. But it does feel like often that it is uh, yeah, a, more, a more marked improvement here with the younger charges. Swedish sideline getting some energy and chanting going. France, on the left of your picture, are going to pull to begin the game. With a nice pull downfield, going to be caught midway through the Swedish end zone. So already forcing them to work a fair way, Hagby. We saw France's zone prove very effective in the last game we streamed. Not a surprise to see them go back to it. Sweden working through it very calmly not a lot of pressure on the handlers but they're working it down down and around this cup it feels like we've had a prevalence of zone played defensively at this tournament part even though it's not necessarily been that windy it's not rained at all but sides have found it very productive as that one the leading pass is too far from Gordon. that was close what a good pick up there for the defense and then just immediately overthrowing the receiver. I wonder if the fact that we're seeing so much zone is kind of designed to test patience and maturity as well as uh, skills on the disc. Oh, cheeky push pass over the top. Like that look from Hogby. Trying to swing it around the back a little bit here. Shuttle these French defenders moving from left to right. We've got a wide open 
player in the backfield, not taken at the first time of asking, said they want to put this through the middle of the field. And I think that time Tittle just went up for it too early. Yeah, slight mis misread there. Beautiful put over the top. That was the exact option that Sweden should be looking for to open up the field, but just yeah, couldn't quite wrap his hands around it. So France with another chance to get the first point on the board with a break. Negra wants to put this one downfield and it's expertly weighted and reeled in. But a one pair and that'll give France a 1-0 lead. That was a beautiful put. And what a, what a nice continuation. Just get it, gets it up the line and immediately has a cut to, to look deep and just has to put it out into space for a receiver to run under it. It's a very mature look for an under-17 team. But I didn't really expect anything else from France. No, we've already seen what they what they can all be about here in this yeah, just well curved shot down the sideline. Erwan Pech is an interesting player because uh, as well as being based in France, he's played a lot out in China as well. So he lives there and came to join the French team despite all the COVID restrictions. So hopefully bringing a lot of Chinese support to YouTube. Uh, won his first China Open with his club Storm at 13 years old and in 2021 received the Ultimate Tomorrow Star Award from the Cantonese Flying Disc Association. Not bad. Uh, not bad is, yeah. I wish I was that, like, yeah. good at 17 or 16. I mean, know? there's nothing like a juniors tournament to make you feel old. Yeah. But good to see that uh, players getting starts young and making... Uh, making their impact in the community. So Sweden now, having been broken on that first point, will look to adjust. France matching up downfield. They've had a little bit of switching between the handlers. Hargaby has it. So they're being forced backhand onto that far sideline and that one's overshot. France will get the disc again. Just good pressure from France, but this easy option does not connect here. And that's an, a second break option for France here. Up line pass goes to Charrier. Charrier uncorks the bomb. He's looking for Raphael Charrier. And he boxes out and makes the grab. France, break again. It's 2-0. That was the exact same way to get that break. This France team yeah. are very athletic and they are, yeah, I think they know it because they're not shy to put that athleticism to use with the big plays. Well, the thing is, if, if it works, right, if you're on a roll and you have that momentum, it's easy just to just put in another one and look at that shot. It's beautiful into the end zone. The defender there can even catch up, but no chance. Shadari actually boxes out really well. He stops a little bit early so he can keep the defender on that back shoulder. And then once he's created that little barrier, he can just go and it's a relatively comfortable catch in the end. Also, what you saw there was the advantage of that up line cut from that other handler because it creates that opportunity. If the defender over commits into the backfield, you get the pass up the line, you're catching the disc, looking downfield already in that power position, ready to huck. And... Uh, yeah, as you can see, it proves di dividends. Thanks, Shaba, for bringing you the coffee, by the way. Yeah, um, Monica is just a gem. Found out her nickname means frog. Frog, oh, why? That's a, is that a nice thing? I don't know. I, Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I didn't ask where it came from. But uh, but with Frisbee nicknames, you know. Sometimes it's best not to know. Yep. Some of those stories. So I, had, I have to say these polls from the French are probably the best I've seen in any, in any division so far. Every single one of them reaching the end zone. Yeah, for under 17s. And these are not smaller fields. These are full regulation size 100 meter fields. So, uh, some achievement. Opting the goal matchup this time, our France. Again, wanting to force backhand here. Squeezing that one up the line, Olsen. Goes central and gets the disc back. Nice little bit of give-go play there with Caesar Nilsson. Here's Casper. Oh, wanted to try and thread that one through. There's going to be a discussion. Oh, no, no there isn't. Decide, I think he was just frustrated, but did release the disc and generates the turn. I wanted, wanted a bit too much. 
But now France are with another back chance and a pick called on the field that stops play. One Swedish player very um, open and alone. Yeah, you may also have noticed that 24 and 25 for uh, for Sweden look very similar and uh, also have the same surname. They are in fact twins, Kasper and Caesar Nilsson. Nice. Yeah, we've seen a lot of familial connections yeah. here. It's great. It's great to watch. Here's Mondly, who's been uh, tearing up our Instagram reels. Oh, another pick. It's a bit messy here. Also probably because they don't have the f whole field to work down, but just a little, you No, know, the red zone. Yeah, this, the setup downfield is quite compact. But it must be great to actually play with your siblings. I only ever played on respective teams with my brother. Uh, I brought my brother to pick up once and I landed on his foot and then sprained my ankle. So, uh, oh. but, uh, but yes, I do see your point. It was fun while it lasted. <laughs> Trying to shoot that one just shy of the end zone. Burgo resets back to Negva. Got the game's first assist. This time he just wants to play it short. Lutayo shot to the end zone. Too far, even for Ilian Mandli. It was so close and France has looked very mature in the way they structure the field and the way they play. And this is the first time we saw them slip up a little bit in terms of just taking a risk. Again, it's this backhand force defensively. Wanting to trap them on the line or force those difficult flick breaks, but that's a nice up line cut. And Andreasen rips it deep. Boxing out, making the grab, no. That's a pity, that was a beautiful put. And Andreasen just te checked for a second. Oh, is someone going? Never mind, I'll put it anyway. Oh, what a beautiful throw hanging up there and then not connecting with the hands. Yeah, Tittle might be a little bit frustrated that he got himself into the position and just couldn't snag it. But again, we're seeing both teams be very effective with those power position hucks from the upline cut. So this one is ripped deep. Easy gas chasing it down for Letayur. Not quite in. He's showing patience. Yeah, you can see just kind of pushing the hands down, calling for calm. And hopped into the end zone by Thomas Pinheiro. France with a third break for a 3-0 lead. I... I know he'd probably just lost his footing a little bit, but it looked looked like he was <laughs> bowing down. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, it's kind of trying to keep balance, I think. Yeah, you're right. But it did look a little bit like a like an impromptu celebration there. Uh, France all over the Swedish net at the moment. So Sweden calling an early, early timeout. Both sides have two to use a half. And I understand why Sweden have used one here. Yeah, I would do, I would probably do the same thing. Especially because they are really close with them. <laughs> We've got and a lot of a lot of Swedish support here on the sidelines, which is good. Not yeah. just from uh, kind of other other Swedish teams, but from kind of parents and supporters on the sideline. So. Yeah, I think so. Which is which is exactly one of the reasons why often youth tournaments are so fun to cover because you've really you've got those. You know, those parents who was who were pleased as punch to see their children representing on the international stage and uh also for these youngsters, often it's the first time they're they're gonna be representing their country and for some of them it'll be you know, it might be the only time they get. So they you know, really wanna make the most of it. And playing against teams from all those different countries, especially after three years of not competing at all internationally from probably most of those players, is Definitely a, a, an amazing experience. Yeah, the under-17s are all, uh, it's the European Championship, so teams from from only uh, only from Europe, but that still covers quite a large area base. In the under-20 divisions, the world juniors, that, uh, yeah, you know, especially if you're a team from Europe, for example, you're three years out of a pandemic, you, A, you know, haven't necessarily played against, you know, Great Britain, France, Italy, Czech Republic, whatever, but also you might never have played against against the USA, Canada, Colombia, New Zealand. It is pretty amazing, but even like internationally in Europe, you get to meet so many new people. And the thing with uh, the, what, what I like about the European scene and also like starting under 17 so much is that you see those people again and again over years and those those matchups turn to friendships and you like five years later, you're like, oh, remember when we played under 17 against each other? I love that. 
Seeing a very fashionable bucket hat worn there by uh, Hugo Burge for uh, for Sweden. Someone's clearly been to the uh, the VC merch tent here. Everyone has because those hats are gone. Really? Yeah, I Damn. wanted to get one. They don't have any more. Rip. Nilsson resets into the backfield. Here's Bruno Olsen. High release to Kasper Nilsson. And that one put deep down the far sideline. This might hang a little bit. And brilliant defensive play made by Olivier Gibert. Gibert also the puller on that team. Puts up those high discs. What's really interesting as well is seeing seeing there's a little section in the player surveys for for the uh, for the young ones to put their uh, ultimate heroes in or just general sporting heroes. I'll finish this point after the uh, after this possession. Is that one layout bid coming through and a foul called there by Caligaro on the bid from Nilsson? It was a beautiful bit. Maybe maybe delayed, but like to have the composure to lay out like that. In the under-17 division, I'm really impressed. And then a nice, calm, composed discussion. Accepted foul. Being aggressive, taking on the break there is Perez. That one all slips up in the center of the field, but that is very awake and very alert from Boulet. Here's Gibert, who generated the turn with that deep D. Perez. Short to Charrier. We know that he can put it if he sees the opportunity. But, uh, oh, cheeky lefty backhand. But, uh, yeah, you could you, you sense that there was uh, a stoppage on the way, and it is a pick. What's your, your favorite phrase? Oh, suspiciously open? Yeah, that's the one. Not that these players can't get open, of course, but uh, sometimes you, just, you can just feel it in your bones. Perez. Might be thinking about the deep shot here. No, instead goes to Gibert up line. Faking. Reset off to Perez. I like the way that they're just keeping the disc moving here, the French. It's imp impressive, really impressive, the way they structure their resets. Boulet to the end zone. It is a touch too much. Looking Just a little bit. Yeah, looking for Calando to reel that one in. My earlier point was going to be that how was interesting seeing how many of the... Uh, how many of the players here have put kind of some famous ultimate players as their uh, as their sporting heroes and it's it's kind of those players who who took the risks of putting themselves out there you know creating all the youtube tutorial tutorials players like Rome McDonnell and Brody Smith yeah Oliver Joubert the one of the more impactful french players we've seen so far he put in um Rowan McDonnell as a sporting hero saying his, his his tutorials really helped me put in the work. Yeah, you're seeing the, the benefit of creating that content, putting it out there and making it freely available for everyone to consume. I love that. Cheeky little knife almost over the top. There's no wind here at the moment, so why not go for those overheads? That's the way to work through that zone. They figured it out now of Sweden. Yeah, that bit's late from Charrier. Leaves him out of position and Sweden put it deep, but that is... Way too far. Is it way too far? I thought he might have caught in there. If we look at that disc, it hangs a bit. And if he had gone, s not stopped running, maybe he could have gotten there. He could have given himself a play at least, I think. Nevertheless, there was a bit rushed. And this is another opportunity for France, but they have to work it down all the way. Horizontal setup here. The French. Perez walking it to the front of the end zone where Hargaby will apply the mark. Caligaro comes underneath. Perez, nice quick disc movement here, working it towards the break side. Now utilizing the quick give goes. They've sliced through this Swedish defense so quickly and they're already just outside the end zone. You can see their boule calls that he wants that nice organized. Set downfield, Heistel takes the reset off to Gibert. Gibert comes back underneath to Caligaro. Fake, oh, he's not faking, he's just demonstrating where he wants the stack to go and it floats over the defender, agonizingly for Sweden, into French hands and they break again, it's 4-0. Yeah, 
Yep, another break for Fra for France, but Sweden put up a real fight. They, you can see that this time it really impacted them in terms of energy. So they came up firing. They got got the disc back as well. Their matchup defense really pressuring France, but in the end, it was a bit of luck involved. But the French, just very mature, very veteran in their movement. I f I think I'm really like I I know I've said this probably three times now, but still the way they structured their offense is very well thought out. It speaks to me of good coaching. Yeah. Very disciplined coaching, and as you mentioned, it's it's really well organized. They're not afraid to reset for a little bit to get themselves into better positions downfield, to get the offense set back up before they try and be aggressive with it again. It's, uh, yeah, systematically really strong. For Sweden, it feels like a little bit of their energy's gone. They were seemed right up for it at the start of the game. They need to try and find a way to, to, to set themselves aflame again. And they will. I'm pretty sure they will. It's just a bit of luck involved as well. And we had a, we saw an amazing play, like d the deep shot that nearly connected. And if that disc doesn't bunch, bump out of the the hands, but it's a big energizer. It, it's a very different mentality that comes after that play. Also, I know this is not the most important thing, but sartorially, I really like the kit matchups here. Those French kits are clean as anything, and I love the Swedish blues as well. Yeah, I agree. I think they're so pretty with the minimalistic lines. So Sweden crossing some players over. Smedding. Wants to find Caesar Nielsen. The two of them running give go. It went so well for France. But Sweden can't repeat their heroics. Le Tailleur getting a hand in there to knock it away. Bechard picks up. Those give goes are working really well until the French catch up yeah you just need to know when to when to stop us the second effort grab from france what an athletic bid it's malo godon this one i think he's going for the greatest i mean he tried there's no fear in these french players at all pretty impressive So I think they're calling the travel because the greatest attempt wasn't in, so it should be taken from the sideline. Yeah, they're right. It should should be the other player to pick up though, the one that initially picked it up. But that doesn't matter, does it? Nice toe. Yeah, that was very close, but managed to keep his toes in bounds somehow. Just good field awareness, yeah. Nilsson. Sundström wants to reset off. Goes back to Smedding. Now it's Sweden's turn to just stay patient with it. But that one tried to force it maybe into a window that wasn't there. Donna bats it and then snaffles it away. Commentators curse Setting in once again. And here's the deep put from the French. This is going to provide some pressure underneath, but it is very well read. It's Donard again, breaking into the end zone. 5-0 for France. They are some team, Christina. They are. You can see in that, on that deep shot, it was kind of covered. There were four people around it, but the only person getting their position and also jumping at the right time was one of the French players. Oh, you see that amazing second effort again. Oh, in the greatest attempt, but he... Yeah, you can see that that foot lands before he's able to release it in bounds. This was the toe tap, just in bounds. <laughs> that is very nifty. And then the big hug for the for the score. And you see, you see a lot of bodies underneath there, but just perfectly weighted into the hands of Donard. Yes, yeah, Smading just gets caught too far underneath it, and Anderson is boxed out well by Donard, who continues into the end zone to put France 5-0 to the good. They are looking ominous if you're one of the other teams in this division. And it's not like France are com completely clean. They just fight for it. 
a bit better. If one can say that. Yeah, I. You're right. Their offense certainly isn't flawless, but defensively, they really do generate pressure, and that will give them those that gives them that license to be a bit more uh, speculative sometimes with their choice of shot. Also, it's very good stuff to film. That is true. Doesn't make for bad, for bad watching. And the few hundred of you watching on our YouTube channel clearly agree. Olsen playing it short. France just changing their defense slightly. And they get their matchup set. Again, looking for those quick little pop-offs. Here's McLean, leads this Swedish team in stats. Lindblad going back to Olsen. Again, France using this backhand force and utilizing it well. Hargaby has it right on that far sideline. But he's looking frustrated as he looks for options. And on the high stall, uncorks it deep. This is floating, this is hanging. Nielsen makes the catch. Oh, and it's out. He's of out of the back. That's a pity. That shot was good as a safety option for the end. And then he also manages to get into a great position. But just a bit out the back. If you're Sweden, got to take the positives from that. You went up against a taller receiver and brought it down, even if it wasn't in bounds. I do think this will get harder and harder as France run down with more breaks to, you know, see the positives. Yeah. But this is also, these games are the ones where you really learn to, to strength, strength your, strengthen your mental side. Pashi goes back to Perez. Caligaro. Swedish zone, just trying something different to slow the French down here. Sharech on the far sideline. French staying patient and staying disciplined. Caligaro finds that pass through, popping it off here and getting it back. Not in the end zone just yet is Calando. Calando wants to squeeze this one down the sideline, but he got it all wrong. Great pressure from the Swedish side now. Really making them work. Taking the little passes, not able to, to go for the big shots anymore. And the French just, uh, yeah, maybe got a little bit, got the end zone eyes there and got a little bit greedy. Lindblad just pops it off. It feels like any connections they have is handlers finding cutters going back to handlers rather than the downfield players linking up with each other as that is a monster grab from Tittle. He was so high up there, I didn't even believe it. Again, this is under 17s. Doesn't seem fair, does it? No, it doesn't. And this one is going to be shot right down the sideline. Perez gets enough on it. That was impressive here with that, just getting fingertips on that disc, making it change its direction enough for another France offensive. Possession. Here's the grab from Tittle. Oh, that's ludicrous. <laughs> that's really stupidly good. And France doesn't matter that they're 5 0 up. When Perez got that deep D, the whole sideline was applauding. Again, it's they they don't want to take their foot off the gas. Past the bidding defenders. Sweden just trying to generate some energy. And the sideline is going to try and assist them in that. Yeah, they've got a, a big entourage working with them. Loads of parents and... Apparently some sort of hooter. Mm. Which <laughs> I love that we're seeing kind of the, the more fanatical aspects come into the ultimate support. Oh, yeah. Caligaro, open, wide open at the front of the end zone is Pashi and sometimes with those zones you do get those almost slightly underwhelming scores where players just find those soft spots and there's no one even near them as they as they catch for the score. Yeah, just very good positioning. And we had a very 
I'm either rather, you know, spectacular or run up to the end zone. So a spectacular score would have been too much. Got to even it out. Love, I love this grab so much. Yes, of course, Sweden couldn't make the most of it, but... Look at him fly. Yeah, it's that left hand that's the first point of contact, and you can see that it's inbounds, and Perez with the very tip of the finger. Very impressive. They move the disc so quickly, don't give the downfield defenders a chance to get set up. Maybe there was over through the first receiver, or under through him. Either way, there was someone there ready for the backup as Caligaro found Pachis for the goal. So what we should look for in Pachis is his vision of the game and reading of the disc. Do you think that placement just in the, fr in the, front, on the front part of the end zone is, is his vision of the game? The way to get through, see, oh yeah, right, that's wide open for me. Hello to everyone watching in the YouTube chat, over 200 of you watching the action here from the European Youth Ultimate Championships at JJUC, the under-17 open matchup between France and Sweden. All of the European Youth Ultimate Championship, the under-17 games this week, will be streamed live on TV's YouTube channel with the WJUC, the under-20s action, being streamed over on the World Flying Disc Federation. And uh, everyone out there, we really appreciate your support. And I'm so do the players and their friends and families watching at home. France switching things up, going back to the zone. Oh, that's a risky pass, maybe. But Linzio was ready. Just popped into the centre there for Kasper Nilsson. Both Nilsson brothers on the field now. Just past the bidding Mondly there, who we know can be a big play machine. France with a seamless transition to a match defence. Huge layout bid. That time, looking to pass off a switch, but there isn't one there. It's going to get the opportunity. There was no timing on the deep cut because McLean had no force. And they would have loved to put that deep. Oh, I bet he'd, he would. As would any throw in that position. Kasper Nilsson. Lindio, who's doing a lot of the heavy cutting for this offense at the moment. Tries to square up, find the reset. Still count rising. What a bid from Burgol. This time he bids and gets that a hand on that disc. They did it so well to be composed and take the right options. And as he goes for the reset, it's just a bit too much into the person that are not put into space quite enough. So France looking for another break as they continue this dominant first half. Burgo really wrenches his body for that fake. Nice little pop-off handler comes through. Negra. You, you see it again near the end zone. Doesn't like what he sees. Calls for that organization. Wants to sneak this one through. And it's run down for France for seven. I saw that player already wanted to lay out and bid for, bid for that disc. But he didn't have to because it was perfectly weighted and just stopped and stood there for him to grab it in the end zone. So shout out f from the chat, Nas Mbe Vogel, one of the rather well-known French players. Just just a bit, uh, and we say French, he's kind of a little bit of a journeyman, yeah. played, played all over the world, all over Europe, including a stint in Sweden as well. Oh, did he? I didn't know that. I, I'm pretty sure he was played in Sweden. I know he plays in Switzerland now. He has played in Switzerland. He's oh, played he's, he, he played for Clapham for a few years as well, I think. All kind of all over the all over the place. Kind of has clearly had an impact wherever he's been. So what he commented on the chat was, um, damn they are good and completely <laughs> agree, damn they are good. Then I don't think that applies just to France as well. 
because we've seen Sweden really string some nice passages together. They've had some flying bids through themselves. At the moment, it just looks like France are just a step above, a cut above them. Yeah, it's, it, what's missing for Sweden is sometimes uh, the composure to, to keep it down, or to, to settle in again. They, they're taking so many great passes and then they're taking one more that is too much. And also, I think the, the handler marking, the coverage of these resets, is g making it so difficult for Sweden when they don't see anything downfield to just keep the disc moving, keep it alive to create themselves more opportunities. Arna wants to swing this one around. Again, it feels like they get a throw off and then they're just held for a, for, a, for a long time before they get the next one off. And that one, defensive pressure, comes flying through. Don't know if it got a tip, but it ended up in a French hand regardless. He is the flame-haired Charrier. First time I've seen him this weekend without his hat. Well, he doesn't need it today. It's not that sunny. Boulet. Find Charrier who makes that reaching grab behind him. Wants to hammer across the end zone. And France break on what has been a near flawless half. Calando catches and France will take the first period eight to nothing. This is dominance. This is very clear dominance from the French side. But I, f I think I've ha made this reference so many times this week. It's, it doesn't seem as close as the score shows. And it, this really, this is really one for this game, where this can where, where this can be applied. But and I mean this this France team, are oh, something else. This is a good, this is a really good f Swedish side, but but the French are just <laughs> impeccable. Right, I hesitate to use this slightly given the age bracket, but it feels a little bit like men against boys sometimes. Yeah. Because there's it's the maturity I think from France that really impresses me. Especially near the end zone. They are so regimented. It's yeah, it's it's really something to watch. So certainly lots of mull over for both sides at half time. You feel that uh Martin Filipovsky, who's one of the uh one of the Swedish coaches will be uh yeah, trying to find some pointed instructions there, making those half-time adjustments. So we're seeing some of the first-half highlights there. We're going to take a break in the booth as well. Make sure that you uh, stretch off, get some water on, stay hydrated, but come back in a few minutes' time when the second half of this game continues. Under-17, EYUC action here at JJUC, and your half-time score is France 8, Sweden 0. See you on the other side. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Right now. He's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a f <laughs> football. Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed.
Welcome back to Ulti TV's coverage of the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships here in Wrocław, Poland. Under 17, EYUC open action with France receiving to begin the second half. Would you believe this is the first time the French have had the chance to put out an O-line, given that they're 8-0 up? They've been that good. It's Benji Reese alongside Christina Obermeyer. See France off to the races here. Now Sweden just forced them close enough to the sideline that they were able to get this defense set again. Mandli. France just being very patient. They, uh, they maybe more than any other team we've seen this week can do this as Mondly takes off deep down this near side. The deep defender was late spawning it, but the throw doesn't go. Finding a little soft spot in the center there is Wu. Pinheiro. Finds Donal. Oh, that was close. Yeah, that was comfortably the tightest window they've thrown into so far. But Montley came through comfortably enough. That one all reaching grab had to be made another by Chestier. Really, another really close one. And now they're shooting down the sideline. And Mondley, oh, very nearly left the door open. But the Swedish defender was agonizingly close. But no cigar. And the French make it nine. Zero. Nine zero, yeah. Nine points. Although this one was an offensive hold, which, you know, expected from that team. I didn't expect anything else, to be fair. Pashi sees the opportunity with the deep defender split, hangs up a little bit. <laughs> I thought maybe he started to celebrate and then realized, oh no, <laughs> the Swedish defender might get this. Whoopsies. And then when it was clear that he, uh, the disc was beyond him, then he could make the catch and celebrate. So Monli plays for the club Salamanders. National experience is in France. Would you have guessed? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you if you haven't seen it already, then of course you can watch back all the games this week for free, live and on demand, either here on Ultra TV or on the WFDF YouTube channel, depending on what we streamed. But I also recommend keeping an eye on our Instagram, which is instagram.com slash ulti.tv, if you're not already following, where there was a ridiculous play from the, uh, from the France-Germany game made by Liliane Mondely. We've uh, put up a few of a uh, few of our little highlights up into reels there on Insta if you're uh, if you're interested. Yeah, just interested. Share it. Interested. Oh, nice. Toy. That one. Oh, just sneaks it off the outreach arm of Jibber. Yeah, yeah, he could have had his fingers on there f quite a few times. Burger. Underneath. Oh, that catch block was stupid and not in a necessarily in a bad sense just that i did not expect him to get that at all but let's say you definitely hit there before the the swedish player yeah i was wondering to see whether hargaby would call the foul but i think he was maybe a little bit shaken up but the turnover stands Lattier, what are you doing man this one bladed with the backhand but over the top of the french receiver They're getting a bit out of control here. Look they were practicing those shots in the warm-up, those uh, rolling hucks across the field. And I think the defender oh. just sucking him into it a bit, a bit. That one maxed straight into the hands of Perez. What good recognition to actually catch that disc just shy of the end zone. Schibert calls for organization and then finds the color coming, streaking free towards that front cone. And France make it 10-0. That was, that was a good Mac. So very n nice defense and then actually catching it as well. I thought we would have seen another Callahan, but he, as I already said, just shy of the end zone and has to go back to Joubert, but just uh, the way to set up your your red zone offense. I mean, they're so... Here's the... Uh, we can't quite see the catch block from that angle. 
Here was how the French gave the disc away, first time of asking. Credit the Swedish defender there for maybe suckering in France for going up for that one a bit too early. Caligaro couldn't bring it down. But after that tip and the interception, again, just reset. And you can see very clearly, Gilbert, I'm not doing anything until you get organised. And then France streaked to the front cone for the score. 10-0. Dominance, but a fr French team. And there's that catch block again from Le Tailleur. He I lays out super early and then manages to get around the body to get that disc in his hands first. I'm not even sure the, the Swedish player knew he was behind him and so close. I mean, it's just ludicrous, isn't it? Here's the pull. The two Nilsons converge underneath it. And just play it between themselves to begin. Oh, beautiful. Defender got, taught, got caught going too far around. Nilsson takes advantage. Here is Caesar Nilsson. Swedish offense moving with a bit more purpose here on this possession. Now they've slowed down slightly. Can France get set? Or will Sweden pick up the pace once more? Sundström gives it to Nilsson. He tries to run the one-two with Smedding. Nilsson is fouled. I was going to say, that came out very strangely, so I wasn't sure whether it just got caught in his hand or I think they see that the French defender tries to flash yeah, in. Runs right through him. Trying to put up his hands, but only catches the defender's hands. Off offensive player's hands, instead of the disc. So they're in a red zone now. They've been there a couple of times. Can they finally take advantage as one Nielsen resets to his twin brother? Big call. An abundance of players. Yeah. Everyone just going to get reset. As Nilsson with an expansive blade over the top. Pressure was enough to prevent it going to hand. And I got to say, that was a bit too much risk for my, my feel. They've worked it so well with the little cuts and, and easy throws. It felt like they didn't necessarily need to do that. But I think maybe that's, the, that's what the pressure of this French side makes you do. It makes you take those slightly riskier decisions and this one is effortlessly laser deep who's gonna get there it's Boileau Boileau started this cut from the handler set going up the line saying oh the disc is reset I'm just gonna burst out deep and in my opinion that's a bit of a risky shot because he has to go all the way through the stack and we saw peeling off the fender running with him but he manages to get in a better position and, and get the goal for for France. I mean, that flick just looks so easy. There's no, you know, real big step into it. There's no huge movement. And Boyo, with a sensational boxing out catch, been playing for eight years. Eight years. I haven't been playing for eight years. He's I under seventeen. I d I didn't even know frisbee existed eight years ago. On the other hand, really. Yeah. Oh my word, really? you're young. Yeah, I am. But the reason Boyo is already play f playing for so many years is that his father also played. Ah, that does make sense. And I'm sure there's going to be a pretty proud papa somewhere, whether it's here at the fields or at home watching on YouTube. We can see there is a decent French contingent clustered behind that end zone. And they put up a French flag behind the other end zone as well. I do love seeing all the support here. This is the thing with youth tournaments is often, you know, the parents take it as an opportunity to come for maybe a little bit of a holiday and support their uh, support their support their young ones and it does, you know, you see that ultimate with those spectators it does feel like a much bouncier, livelier atmosphere. It's great fun. Sweden on this near sideline. 
going all the way back into their own end zone. That French zone, still pressuring them, haven't really found a way around it. Going to float one over to the far side, just trying to find some room to work with. But this front three slash four for the French is tricky. That one just about goes to hand. Trying to squeeze that one through, but the French arms were waiting and Boulet picks up quickly. Chestier on the near sideline. Peschard goes back for Chestier and that one is slapped to the turf by the Swedes. Well seen from the Swede. Lugqvist looks to immediately take, take off deep, but Sweden just being a little bit slower in picking up. I would have loved to see like a, a quick pick up and just huck it and try your best. But they let France set up the zone again. Yeah, I think maybe we haven't really seen Sweden test out the French deep enough in this game. Brilliant outreaching grab there from Lundqvist. It's the bleached blonde hair of Lindberg. Do you think it's bleached? You know, most of the time I'd say yes. With the Swedes, I'm not actually sure. But certainly it's that bright blonde at least. See the Swedes, they're looking off those swings to try and get a bit more uh, bit more activity downfield, but the timing just isn't quite there. The French defense gets set in position so quickly. Oh, nifty shot over the top and now working it through the middle. Yeah, I thought it was slightly dicey, but in the end it just diced up the French. In theory, that shot, shot was open again, but this time they up not to take it. I mean, they do warn children about playing with knives, so fair enough. Sweden on the sideline. They're staying patient, taking what they see, but maybe not quite being aggressive enough and setting this apart. Brilliant high grab by Hannes Andreasen. That one always tipped but it still ends up with Lindberg. It's a nice interplay there from the Swedes. And they're not really attacking the zone with the goal to get yards, but rather to just keep possession alive. And this makes it really, really easy to position France oh, well until... Going for the blade. And that time just bounced in and out of the hands of Lindberg. France calling the timeout. A good idea. They have been running for quite some time and getting a, a rest in for a minute using one of those two timeouts they have left for this half. Seems like a smart strategy. So while the players take a breather on the field, we are going to do so in the booth, but our action returns very shortly. Don't go away. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread Ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. Love you, team. We are a group of Ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond.
right now. He's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a <laughs> football. Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed. Welcome back to Wrocław, Poland. <laughs> For the Joint Junior Ultimate Championships. See the French closes clearly in a good mood and why not when you're up 11-0 here in the under-17 Open Division action? Yeah, I would be in a good mood. I am in a good mood. Yeah, me too. It's been it's quite something to watch. Someone in the chat said that you almost forget that these are it's the under 17s with the quality of the play out there and I completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> like the France, not afraid to use these give goes when they're available. Now they're looking to swing and stretch the Swedes horizontally. On that far sideline is Pinheiro. Finds an option downfield. Thought that maybe he was just landed awkwardly, but everything seems to be fine. Boulet. Finds Wu. Wu over the top. There is another reset handler back. Happy to cut out the middle man on that occasion. Pashi. Sweden is staying, that, staying in that zone, even in front of the end zone. That's really, really an interesting look. I mean, I do quite like it because we've seen that France love to get that really organised vertical set, vertical sack in the end zone. So uh, going with the zone might circumvent that, but it's kind of a little bit of pick your poison because France swung it around the back so well to a wide open receiver on the far side nine, and now it's 12. It's uh, that kind of game for Sweden. It feels it just. I like that they're trying something different here because it could prove to be successful. You lose nothing by trying because what they've done so far clearly hasn't worked. But I don't know if there will be any easier goals, really, for Peshar to Boulet. I don't think we can, we can talk about easy because they did push them in the red zone to make at least 10 to 15 passes. So, you know, they've, they've stopped some flow. They've... They've slowed them down. They've pushed them to, to work it from a different angle. Work it around and be patient. But they have proven to be very patient. And while this might work really well with the other under-17 teams, France just seems more mature. So the format uh, of the under-17 Open Division, a kind of every every division has a different number of teams, and thus that means we've got six different formats to try and keep on top of. Uh, there's nine teams in the under-17 Open Division as France get the block in the short field. Just another red zone opportunity for them. Perez. Handler runs through, falls over on that cut, so they just take the sensible reset. Negro, back to Perez. Happy to go back to the brick mark now. Gordon. Just popping it forward now. Gilbert. Two, two very open players for the French side, just in front of the neon zone. Yeah, Sweden clearly trying to do something different defensively. Pooching off a little bit to try and stop those plays coming out of that stack. So France spread themselves out, just take the little pops into the end zone from Perez, into the hands of Le Tailleur. That's now 13 nothing. It is. I I really I said that just the last point, but this this time again they really they push France. Their def de their defense isn't bad. Yeah, they went for something different, and again it took the French a while to kind of figure it out. But the the, f the fun thing about this French team is that they don't try and hope it works, but they. 
take the time to figure it out. They take the extra second to look at the pass and, and weigh their options. So, in the under-17 Open Division, nine teams. So it's just a big round robin. So each team plays eight pool games, and then the top two in the pool go straight to the final and with third and fourth playing off for the bronze medal. This really makes for a huge three, four, or five-way tie. There is the potential for those big ties to to put to be uh, to be possible 100%. Although I must say, at the moment, it feels like France are a dead cert for the final. I think France, f for me, it's not a question whether they are, they are in the final or not. For me, it's a question who is going to be in the final against them. But all the other teams seems to seem to be rather evenly distributed. Belgium, Italy, and Sweden have two wins and one loss so far. Yeah, Great Britain and Switzerland and Germany have all won games as well. Yeah, but won one game. Germany has lost one game, but they have not yet played more than two. For GB Switz and Switzerland, they have played three games, won one, lost two. So they're still still in the mix for one of the upper upper plays as well. So elsewhere in the division at the moment, Germany up five four on Belgium. Switzerland leading Israel 12-4 and Great Britain up 11-6 on the Netherlands. So a foul on the field. As you try to get a D on that disc, just hit the head of the Swedish player there. Cheeky little scuba into the center of the pitch. I love that. And now on the run. Berger. Goes back. Here's Bruno Olsen. Keeping it all very tight to this sideline at the moment. Hargaby. Can they find a way to get it off this trap sideline? Still count must be rising. So just puts air under it, into the end zone, a maelstrom of bodies underneath it. And a French defender pops up and rises to bring it down. No surprise, your big pile of players. Could have gone either way, but a French defender ends up with this, the disc in, her, in their hands. Yeah, Boileau made the catch as that one is just turfed. Red zone opportunity for Sweden this time. Volunteers just doing a good job of trying to keep the Swedish players back off the sideline, which we greatly appreciate. Don't want, to, don't want any more finnies out here. Nice reset cut there from Olsen. Shimmying around. Runs a little one-two with Hargaby. Oh, he really got Shadier biting on that one. But again, they've been forced all the way to this sideline. McLean wants to squeeze it in there. Nice catch made coming back towards the disc by Hargaby. Past the bidding defender. Thought about the upline cut, but a really good flash into that lane from Boileau. Just stepping over him. And that one shot and defended again by France. Yeah, the French defender had the better position and that disc, that disc was a bit too risky from my taste. Yeah, I think it's again, it's a high stall option. Just put it near a receiver and see what you can come up with. Yeah, that won't work against the French team. No, not the way they've been playing. While all picks up again. Takes the reset off the hands of Chalier. This will be Sweden's best opportunity so far for the goal, but a foul called. A foul called on the throw. And I I, I was going to say, I'm a bit surprised because the resets have been so clinical. Must admit, I didn't get a, the best look at the throw because oh there's no, a really large did. Swedish presence on the <laughs> sideline. But uh, it doesn't look like it's been contested. Pell goes downfield, wants to bomb this deep, gets the edge on it right, and what a howitzer that is! Into the end zone. Just beautifully weighted. That disc going all the way to the back of the end zone into the hands of a French player. 
And that makes it 14 points. A oh. sumptuous delivery on that one. From Erwan Pach. See it again. Gets the initiation cut underneath. From Boileau. And wastes no time. Getting it out there nice and early before the defender closes. And then streaking towards the back of the end zone. Toma Calando. France one point away from big victory. From a big victory, yeah. You can see they're getting their instructions for what could be the final point of this game. Of course, Sweden is going to do everything they they can to stop this from being the final point of the game. And they have had their opportunities. They certainly have. Especially recently, they've really got a lot of red zone possessions. But France have been, but not broken, as that pull lands out of bounds and... I think we're going to see the first brick for the Swedes, oh. which is crazy because it just speaks to the quality of the pulling this game. I already noticed, noticed that in the beginning, the pulls were so good. And this one just floating out the side a bit. Still quite a long one. Yeah, I had the distance, just not quite the line. The wind has been picking up a bit as well. Yeah, and you wonder whether that probably plays a factor. Nilsson, downfield to Smerling. Again, France done so well at trapping them on the sidelines, although this time Sweden break off well. Lindberg goes back to Smerling in the backfield. Good pressure on that reset, but manages to get his hands around it and... This time, the disc got a bit too far behind the defender and into the arms of the French players, and this is their opportunity to close that game out. Yeah, Lindblad stuck out an arm behind him, but he couldn't bring it in. Caesar Nielsen is looking kind of nautical with the uh, with with that hat. Puts on the initial mark. French trying to reset, just beyond the arms of Lindberg. Into Boulet. Boulet here to Wu, faking the inside flip, going into the backfield for Mandli instead. Swedish defense have really forced the French back here. Deserve credit for that. And, oh, it's tipped. But the French come up with it anyway. It's that sort of game for the Swedes. Yeah, I see some frustration on the sidelines and I get it. That one, maybe a little bit of an overthrow, but France wheel it in and then into the end zone to complete the 15-0 victory. It is flawless from the French. Yep. I think flawless describes it really well, and it's so hard for the Swedish side to, to stay high and keep that heads up and energy for the, for the future games. But, yeah, we're just well played from the French, and you, we, could we could also see that Sweden did not give up. They no, tried really hard. Absolutely not. And I think rather than, you know, att rather than saying a lot about Sweden, this just speaks an awful lot to how good this French side are. Yep. They'll move to 4 and 0 in the pool and you kind of um, you'd find it extremely difficult to imagine that we won't be seeing them on the final later this week. I think I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt them. So, that'll bring an end to this first game here of the day, but don't worry because we have four more for you here at JJUC. The hits just keep on coming. So, coming up next, under 20 open division action, which is your Patreon voted game, Netherlands, Netherlands, New Zealand even, excuse me, versus the Czech Republic. You can watch that over on the World Flying Disc Federation YouTube channel. We're back on OTTV's YouTube at one o'clock, under 17 women, Italy versus Sweden. And the Swedes are back on at three o'clock in the under 20 mixed division over on WFDF. Sweden versus Slovakia, first time we've seen Slovakian sides this week and we will have a to be determined women's uh, under 20 matchup 
over on Woofdorf at 5 o'clock today. Thank you very much for watching here on Ulti TV's YouTube channel. Coverage of the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships. This game from the European Youth Ultimate Championships Under-17 Open Division. Sweden nil, France 15 is your final score for Christina Obermeyer. I'm Benji Reese saying we'll see you on the other side. Bichon picks up, and they've got a short field. They've got another goal. It's tied up at 12. I cannot believe what those. I'm seeing Can here. Lola Dam chase that one down? That is a score for Hashlik and Elverkel. Fantastic run by Julia Lerz. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. And we believe that that requires knocking down the payroll. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch, and we want them to go viral. When you become a member, you enable us to improve our working relationships with tournament organizers, events and federations. And you'll help us to produce live stories for Ultimate fans and to generate new fans with our enhanced content. We, we are, are a group, group of, of Ultimate, Ultimate players, players, coaches and video enthusiasts. And we want to bring you coverage on a more consistent basis. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Ciao ragazzi, support the community. And subscribe all the TV. There's lots of the videos, posting everything. Check it out. <laughs> they are the best one. Woo! If you want to grow Ultimate Sports, uh, become a member of Ulti TV. Regardez Ulti TV. Deviens un membre d'Ulti TV et fais grandir ta communauté. Stop Ulti TV. Salme et rogenkeme Ultimate of Andromeda. Si quieres ayudar a Ulti TV, puedes ser miembro de Ulti TV. Thumbs up for Ulti TV. Everyone, follow Ulti TV on Instagram, on YouTube. They've got everything. Best like, content. Like their pictures if you love free speech. Just do it. We're counting on you. Leave me a love for Ulti TV. Became member of Ulti TV. Mamma mia. Contribue au développement d'Ultimate avec Ulti TV. Like and subscribe, Ulti TV, the best in the world. We want to grow Ultimate. We want to grow Ultimate. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We have our signature style two camera setup. With thousands of hours of experience. And our crew is globally dispersed to facilitate coverage everywhere around the world. We can also scale back our broadcast with just one elevated camera. Or scale up with two fields, two cameras and two commentators on each. We work with local teams and we all have the same mission, to grow the sport and bring it to new people by providing live coverage and new stories. Become a member today on our Patreon page. And, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories, ideas and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Right now, he's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed.
safety.tv.